The market's dead, but it's okay. It happens this time every year. Something different's happening with inventory levels, though. We're going to talk about that. In this video, we're going to go over the single family and common markets in the state of Massachusetts. We'll also do an interest rate update. And let's talk about how the mortgage delinquency rate hit a 43 year low and what that means. Plus, let's take a look at what rental rates are doing and talk about those repercussions. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. As I said, the market's dead. I remember back when I first started selling real estate, and some agent said that he takes the entire month of August off. He was a very well-established agent. I still remember saying to myself how crazy that was, but it didn't take me long to realize that he might have been right. Now, the month of August, it's the slowest month of the year. Yes, properties are closing, but very little is happening with new listings. Buyers looking at properties, properties going under agreement. Don't get me wrong. There are definitely some that are doing it, and it doesn't make much sense to make a pricing correction in this market either. It's like shooting a bullet up into the sky. It's just a waste of gunpowder and a perfectly good bullet. But now, let's jump into the single family market stats. We currently have 3,916 houses on the market. Well, this is interesting. Inventory, it's up two weeks in a row. And it's flirting with the year-long high of 4,012 units. So is inventory up because a lot more sellers are coming to the market or because buyer demand is waning? Interest rates did just hit a 23-year high after all. So let's find out. We really started closing the gap between year-over-year -year inventory levels. With this week's inventory built, now... Two weeks ago, we had 1,855 fewer single-family homes on the market. This week, it's only 1,481 units. That's a big swing. In a matter of just two weeks, this week, there are 26% fewer houses on the market today than today last year. Right when I thought we had this market figured out, it throws this at us. But when we compare the inventory levels to the previous all-time low in 2021, we now have 565 fewer houses on the market. This is compared to the 937 houses difference just two weeks ago. It's kind of crazy turnaround. That's really got me excited for next week's data. Now, in the last two weeks, I had said that the market wasn't going to get any better come the fall for buyers. Inventory levels are making me a little bit of a liar here. These increases in inventory levels are most likely coming at a cost to future buyers. That cost? Well, it's the 23-year high in interest rates. But we knew this was all coming. The high interest rates, that is. After all, we did a video on this in the beginning of July. If you haven't seen it, then you should check it out because it's turning out to be right on point. We had 919 single-family homes come on the market this week. Now, in the last four weeks, we've had 894 units, 899, 905, and now 919 houses come on the market. That's a pretty tight range right there. This week's levels are compared to last year when 1,074 houses came on the market. This means that we were 14.4% short of last year's levels. Now, the 40 for only average is 926 units, so this puts us right at average. We had 801 single-family homes go under agreement last week. Now, this is compared to the 1,145 units that went under agreement this week last year. This means that under agreements were off by 30%. Last week, there was a 9% difference between new listings and under agreements. This week, that difference has grown to 15%, and that is why inventory is building. It's not a bigger surge of listing activity. It's from a decrease in buyer demand, a very considerable decrease. Now, the four-week rolling average is 922 units, so under agreements are well below that average. There are 542 single-family homes that closed last week for an average sales price of $774,000 and that median sales price of $630,000. And months of inventory. This is how we determine what type of months we are in. Zero to five months is considered a seller's market. With the closer you get to zero, then the more aggressive of a seller's market it is. This week, months of inventory increased to 1.31 months compared to last week's 1.28 months. This continues to indicate that it is a strong market for sellers. Real quick, it's my shameless plug. I just wanted to mention that if you are thinking about buying or selling a home, then I would love to help you. It'd be a true pleasure. Now, on to the condo market. We have 2,184 condos on the market as of Monday. Now, unlike the single family market, Inventory decreased in the condo market. It was a slight decrease, but it decreased. When comparing inventory levels today to 28 days ago, inventory has now gone down by 3.9% in the condo market. We currently have 358 fewer condo units on the market today than we did today last year. This means that inventory is only off by 14% compared to the same time last year when there were 2,542 condos on the market. 
Now, two weeks ago, we had 611 fewer condos in the market. Last week, it was 448 fewer. This week, it's 358. And that shrinking inventory gap is even with inventory slightly decreasing this week. Now, there were 387 condos that came on the market this week. The four-week rolling average is 434 units. So we were a chunk below those levels. But here is where it gets a little crazy. This week's new listing activity was 22 units higher than this week last year. Last week, we were shy last year's numbers by seven units. But this week, we actually jumped over that line and now listed 22 more condos at the same time last year. There were 372 condos that went under agreement this week, while the four-week rolling average is 377 units, so we were pretty much right on target there. And when compared to the same time last year, there were 422 condos that went under agreement. This means the amount of condos that went under agreement were off by 11.9%. So last week was 13.8%, and now this week, it's decreased even further to 11.9%. So inventory was up by 6% compared to last year's numbers, while pendings were down by 11.9%. So what's going on here? Well, we're now starting to compare to a time of comparison where the market dynamics, well, they're similar. It was this time last year that all the pent-up demand was starting to wane. All the people that were beaten up by the previous market had now been able to secure a property as that market cooled. There were 195 condos that sold this week for an average sales price of $778,000 and that median sales price of $560,000. And months of inventory, it decreased to 1.61 months from last week's 1.64 months. Do you like hearing about what's going on in the Massachusetts real estate market? Then can you do me a huge favor? Can you just hit that like button right down there? As it helps with that YouTube algorithm. And while subscribing, that one doesn't hurt either. Now, I've already talked about it a couple of times, but it was a rough week for interest rates. We kind of got kicked in our teeth. Interest rates are now at 23-year highs. Now, the actions of these rates are breaking the rules. CPI did. It came in where, well, we wanted it to. But rates surged higher anyway. So what gives? As we know, mortgage rates follow the 10-year treasury. And the 10-year treasury spiked. It seems that, well, there's some confusion here. One thing I read about is how oil prices are going up. And there are thoughts that this increase in energy costs, well, it's going to play out through the economy with higher future inflation. In other words, this good data, it was just a head fade. Another interesting thing I read was how the market is adjusting to the realization that the government revenues are going to be down while expenses, well, they're going to be up. This means the government will need to issue more debt in order to lower market. For that debt, they're going to need to have a higher bond rate and or print more money. Specifically, that bond rate is going to matter because it's the 10-year treasury. Well, one, that's what our mortgage rates follow. So I guess if we want lower interest rates, then we should probably just let our government officials know that, well, maybe they should, I don't know, live in their means. Just let them know, and I'm sure they'll straighten that shit out right away, right? Kind of crazy. All of that doom and gloom talk and how there were going to be a lot of foreclosures that were going to hit the market and how prices were going to drop like hot potatoes. The only get headlines of the mortgage delinquency rate falls to lowest levels since 1979. You can't get foreclosures without people being delinquent on their mortgages. And the Mortgage Bankers Association just reported that the mortgage delinquency rate fell to its lowest level since it began tracking the metric in 1979. Now, the article quotes MBA's Vice President of Industry Analysis say, Buoyed by a resilient job market, homeowners are continuing to make their mortgage payments, which that's a great thing. The seasonally adjusted delinquency rate for one to four unit residential properties is 3.37% in the second quarter of this year. This is a 27 basis point decrease when compared to the same time last year. Now, I was one of the first to say, and I'm going to continue to say it and point it out, the crash isn't going to happen in the residential market. It's going to, and has actually already started happening, in the commercial market. And a while back, I did a video looking at home prices in the 70s and looking at how a high inflationary rate environment correlates with housing prices. It was a lot of interesting data. That is turning out to be correct as history is repeating itself. But one thing I noted in that video is how inflation dipped in 1976. It went from 9.14% in 1975 down to 5.74% in 1976. Then it only started going back up in 1977, 6.5%, and continued to go up for the next three years, top out at 13.55% in 1980. 1976 turned out to be a head fake. Is history repeating itself here? Are we just getting another head fake? Which would mean that more inflation is on the horizon. People have started to take a victory lap after the consumer price index data from last week. 
It was some great data. Don't get me wrong. But do you know what the biggest weight of the CPI data is? It's shelter. The issue with the CPI data is that it is a lagging data metric, 9 to 12 months to be exact. And why does this matter? Because real-time metrics have the asking July rent hitting $2,030 per month, which is just $16 behind the record high set in August 2022. Real-time actual rent indexes show that rent has been rising for the last six months now and is about to take out all-time highs. In other words, this data is going to start showing up and be reflected in the CPI data in about six to nine months from now. So what does all of this mean? Conventional thinking is at this point, the Fed is pretty much done with rate hikes with some big money making some big bets. The Fed's going to start cutting as soon as quarter two of 2024. If we're reading the tea leaves correctly and using history as our guide, then this is not going to happen. Inflation is very difficult to stamp out. And this current slowdown in inflation levels is just a head fake. And that would mean that the big money should be betting at no rate cuts coming at us anytime soon. Want to talk about your own personal real estate needs? Whether you're looking to buy a house in the next 9 or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just talk to you a little bit more about your real estate goals. And if you're thinking about possibly selling a house, well, then we can help you traditionally or even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation, we can help you get it done. You can visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and just fill in a couple questions and we're going to reach out to you. You can find all our information in the description below, whatever works best for you. Questions or comments about the market data, drop me a line in that comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond to you. Until next time.